What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool news video and I'm very very surprised and shocked and sad that the Egyptian FA confirmed that Mo Salah tested positive after partying at his brother's uh, wedding which at first I didn't really like the look of it that he was dancing with hundreds of people and in, a, in one video you could see that Salah at first he was wearing a mask but only under his nose and after that he wasn't wearing a mask at all and in these times I think Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool will be furious with this conduct of course we cannot confirm where Salah contacted the virus but it's very alarming that just a few days after those videos surfaced on social media the Egyptian FA has confirmed that Mo Salah has tested positive at first I was hoping that this was a false positive but then later uh, one day after that they confirmed that there's his second test came back positive as well so now it's 100% that Mo Salah is, is positive he has the virus and he will now miss Liverpool's two matches which is Leicester City and Atalanta both at Anfield and those are two very very important games and now in the middle of the worst injury crisis that Liverpool has have had in the last 10 years this is the last thing that Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp wanted and needed so let me know what is your honest reaction do you think Salah had the right to go his brother to his brother's wedding in the middle of the pandemic I think what should have happened is Salah should have told his brother to postpone his wedding until next summer he could have waited eight or nine months after the pandemic is over and after we have a vaccine and then he could have had the biggest wedding the most lavish wedding and I know that it's a tradition in Egypt to have a huge wedding and the people were hugging and dancing and I can't fault Salah from a personal perspective that he, he just had to attend his brother's wedding. It would have been the biggest insult and in, in Egypt I guess the family is very very important in their culture and the weddings are a very very important uh, culture thing as well, like in many other countries as well. But in the middle of the pandemic, you have to be honest, when, when Liverpool are doing so so much to isolate the players to basically keep them in a bubble and they are testing them twice three times every week and they are spending a lot of money on tests and they are spending a lot of money to keep the players safe and then Salah goes on international duty and parties with hundreds of people it's not a good look and I, I don't really really like it and the BBC Sport uh, has confirmed that Salah's second Covid test came back positive and which means that he will now self-isolate and return to Merseyside just before the Brighton game so he will not be back to Liverpool in Li and he will miss Liverpool training for two weeks now and he will miss the Leicester and the Atalanta games and Salah has 10 goals in total this season and he has 8 goals in 8 games in the Premier League so he is our top scorer and to miss Salah for those two big games I mean don't forget Leicester City are top of the Premier League and without Salah Liverpool have a, a lower chance of winning that game and that this could cost us uh, points and this could also cost us points in the Champions League even though in the Champions League Liverpool are in a very good position we have 9 points from 9 uh, but still, we, we, if we lose against Atalanta at Anfield, then we could be in a dangerous position. The, Eng the Egy Egyptian FA said that Salah is keeping a high spirit and at least he's not showing any symptoms of the virus. And so far, Mane, Thiago, Tsimikas and Sherna Shakiri have all tested positive before for, for this virus. And this is why I absolutely hate international football. But also, Salah has to be a little bit smarter than this. But I don't know, of course, the details. Uh, and we don't know when and where Salah contacted the virus he could have had contacted it elsewhere but there is a very good chance that he contacted it during the wedding and in the middle of the pandemic it doesn't look good when a professional footballer who has all the privileges and everything at his disposal he has all the options he's earning 200,000 pounds per week that which is paid by Liverpool and he's out partying it it see it uh, fuels the stereotype that footballers think that they are above the law above the rules and they can just get away with uh, just about anything and everything so what Salah has to do is uh, stay at home for 10 days and after that he has to have two negative tests in a row 
and after that he can join training and maybe play for Liverpool as well. And if you look at the videos from the wedding, nobody is wearing a mask. Even in the second part of the videos, not even Salah is wearing the mask, but nobody else is wearing a mask. They are not social distancing, they are hugging, dancing um, with each other, and there are like hundreds of people in a large hall indoors. So it's like a cluster of the vi for the virus. So the wedding took place in Cairo, which is a really, really huge city in Egypt. Uh, Salah's hometown, of uh, Nagrig is around 130 kilometers from Cairo but even he, the major of Salah's hometown Maher Shati um, was actually defending Salah he said that this all what has been said is false it does not make sense to hug someone five times in the same wedding also Salah was extremely cautious during the one hour wedding he never took his mask off except for taking photographs. Salah is fine now, he does not show any symptoms. I talked to his father and uncle. Trezeguet was the only other Egypt player who came to the wedding with Salah. He was ex also extremely cautious. That is just a big fat lie. Salah took off his mask. There are videos where Salah is dancing without his mask on or his mask was like this. And that, that basically is the same as taking your mask off. It, uh, it uh, do doesn't protect you if you don't have your mask on above your nose. So I don't like this that the uh, mayor, mayor of uh, uh, Salah's hometown is coming out defending Salah when in fact uh, Salah should be condemned because yes he might uh, you know survive this uh, for the next 10 days but he might infect others and also it doesn't the footballers are role mothers there are millions of kids not just in Egypt but around the world who absolutely idolize Salah and they worship him they they Salah is their role model and Salah for Sim to set such a bad example in the middle of the pandemic when uh, you should be staying at home, isolating and not going to parties, not going to huge weddings, not even hosting or attending huge weddings and, and Salah does this, it, it is not a good precedent and it influences the young people that follow Salah very closely, badly. I mean, those videos were shared on social media by, by hundreds of thousands of people and it doesn't look good. What is also very interesting is that the Norwegian Ministry of Health actually denied the Norwegian national team to travel abroad for the upcoming Nations League group games against Romania and Austria. This is the first time a country's uh, like Ministry of Health actually denies the country's national team to travel abroad and uh, some people are saying that they are doing the right thing which I kind of agree with this, but also if the repercussions are so bad for the national team that they lose their chance to qualify for the next World Cup, then uh, I, I can feel a bit sorry for the players as well. And the president of the Norwegian Football Federation said this, when the Norwegian Directorate of Health puts its foot down, we have asked the squad to remain in Norway until we get a new assessment. We have Norwegian legislation on a side that we interpret differently. If we do not travel, we are breaking the European community we are part of. We, and not least the players, lose an opportunity to qualify for the World Cup should we fail in the first round. We lose the chance for a group with, with that would give promotion to level A and hence more attractive opponents and that this has very large financial conse consequences for us. In addition, as the only country in UEFA, we will not be able to compete in mandatory matches to which we have committed ourselves. This is a very demanding situation. So, of course, the Norwegian uh, Football Association is not happy with, uh, with this decision. And I would love to hear what do you, do you think about this. Do you think that the Norwegian Ministry of Health is right? They want to, of course, protect not just the players, but they want to make sure that the players don't uh, get infected during traveling and they don't take the virus with themselves either back to Norway or to other countries. I think at first what they wanted to do is just keep the players who are playing in the Norwegian league at home and don't let them travel and let the foreign players who play for the Norwegian national team travel but in the end they made the decision to not let the national team travel at all and I would love to see what UEFA will do but I think UEFA will be very hard on Norway they will punish them they will get uh, probably 
uh, three nil results uh, to the opposition awarded, three nil wins to the opposition awarded. And I mean, I find this very, very sad that in the middle of the pandemic, when, when every decision matters and every decision could save a life, it's more important to play international friendlies, it's more important to play international Nations League games, which, let's be honest, they are pretty meaningless and uh, the friendlies are totally meaningless as well because the UEFA and uh, the TV broadcasters want to make as much money as possible they want to milk the footballers dry they are exploiting the footballers and they are also putting them at risk they are putting their clubs at risk they are putting the footballers families at risk and they are putting putting the whole um, world at risk because this helps the vi virus spread and when there are lockdowns all over the world we are going through with playing friendlies like uh, nothing happened why on earth did they postpone the euros then because this doesn't make sense po you postpone the euros but then you carry on playing friendlies and you carry on playing nations league games all over europe like there is no pandemic and i get that you have to play qualifiers you have to play world cup qualifiers you have to play european qualifiers but i would only play those i would postpone and uh, i mean i would scrap the nations league for this year i would scrap all friendlies only the qualifiers need to be played once you qualified for the tournament or once you are knocked out of the tournament then just let the footballers stay at their clubs, rest, recover, because it's a brutal season, you are playing every three days at your club, and UEFA want the international players to come to their country and play three times in a week during international break, every two months. It's, it's absolutely a ludicrous situation, in my opinion. And what is also very interesting is that the Norwegian players have been tested four times since arriving in Norway and all 39 test results received that are negative. The Norwegian national team is confident that they will handle the situation with travel, where we travel as a group in our own bus with our own charter plane and live in isolation at the hotel in Romania because they will play uh, they are supposed to play in Romania. So after all the players test negative, it's very, very difficult for the Norwegian uh, players to accept that they are not allowed to travel to Romania. And let me know what do you think. I would love to hear your opinion. And Joe Gomez, uh, just before the end of the video, let's talk about Joe Gomez. He posted a very heartfelt message on Twitter saying, the road to recovery has already begun. I've been here before, I know what it takes, and I will be back better and stronger than ever. I'm obviously gutted, but this is part of God's plan, and I believe everything happens for a reason. I would like to thank everyone for their well wishes and messages of support. I'm focused on my recovery and supporting my teammates in every way I can. See you soon. Uh, love, Joe Gomez. And after Virgin van Dijk, Trent Alexander-Arnold, and Joe Gomez got injured, Liverpool, have a very very depleted defense so the last thing we needed was Salah getting COVID but what can you do I really really hope that Liverpool sign a centre-back in January because um, we, if we don't I don't see us winning the Premier League title because the season is just so brutal and so long let me know what do you think about all of the things that we discussed in the comments below and thanks for watching guys see you later goodbye